And now it's time for the Wild Side News with your host, Sydney Wild uh, Hello, is anybody listening? It's hard to cut through all the noise. But I'll keep trying to bring you the voice of the earth here on the Wild Side News. This, this, this is a special edition of the Wild Side News. We're trying to keep the voices alive, and it's becoming increasingly difficult as the sounds of the crashing global industrial matrix are drowning out all the other voices. Or at least that is the case in the media these days. Truth is, nature is trying to get our attention. They are hurting and some are giving up. Imagine how they must feel as their once beloved calls, howls and whistles are being drowned out. Not only because we humans are taking over the entire planet, but also that when times like these arise, who has time to think about restoring our oceans? Preserving we humans are having an enormous challenge sorting through all the noise. But in oceans around the world, the literal man-made noise from boats and drilling and seismic testing and military sonar is becoming so pervasive and endless that whales and dolphins and turtles that have relied on their communication systems for millions of years are, like the rest of nature, being drowned out. When these animals cannot hear and be heard, they become confused and disoriented. They cannot find any sense of great stress. I'm sorry about that, but it's literally drowning out all other concerns. And the irony is, that now more than ever, the concerns of the living systems should be heard loud and clear. <clears throat> it's like the results of a recent survey of Americans about the bison or buffalo. When the voices of the 2,000 participants was heard, they said they loved bison, and they wanted them to continue to be part of our legacy. But in fact, of the 500,000 bison in the U.S., only 9,000 are actually wild. The rest are on ranches. There's an effort to implement a restoration plan, but according to the Wildlife Conservation Society, it will take over 100 years. And as things are going... If that were the extent of the issue, I would let them fail. My concern with such an approach is that it plays Russian roulette the with the entire economy of the United uh, States. Would be affected, essentially, yeah, you know, it's a lot true. like that with nature. We just can't afford to let it die. Too much of our way of life depends on it. And as nature goes, so goes the nation and the world. And yet, in the name of keeping this massive consumer circus taking our minds off of things that matter, if we can hear, we may be able to listen through the clamor that the development of oil sands in Canada could result in the deaths of 166 million birds. And let me assure Do you, you the that when they are gone, that their voices oh, will never be heard from the again. But I don't believe it's the whole economy of the United States is based on this uh, at all. I think that a Trouble lot of these is, companies we are getting today, such mixed messages GM about the future. One minute we hear that the entire survival of America depends on being able to drill, baby drill, so that someday oil prices will come down and then literally one month later prices have come down to the lowest in ages and a dollar a gallon gasoline is being proposed well that should be a giant yippee for us all but then we hear that the markets are sending mixed messages to consumers and the auto industry is I think, I think we're back. And, and what the hell? The captains of empire whisper, whisper, that the banks may be in trouble. And $700 billion is in their coffers within weeks, which they use to buy up banks. And now the auto industry asks for one twentieth the amount, and they are being pushed and bullied into who knows what. And not that long ago, when Congress was hammering out the energy bill, it managed to come up with $20 billion in tax credits over 10 years to support renewable energy projects and research. $20 billion. Amazingly, nature has provided ample examples of good and bad things to do. 
I think it's called survival of the fittest. It's how species change through time. Well, nature does talk. And if we listen, well, one of the most fascinating stories comes from the Great Ape Trust in Iowa, where Sue Rumbaugh, no relation to Rush Limbaugh, except that she does work with apes, has been focused on the bonobo monkeys. And for those who can hear, it's becoming obvious that many of the assumptions of how simple-minded animals are, are falling like the global economy. There are people who think that the animal world is hard, and that there's something very, very special about man. Maybe it's his ability to have causal thought. Maybe it's something special in his brain that allows him to have language. Maybe it's something special in his brain that allows him to make tools or to have mathematics. Well, I don't know. There were Tasmanians who were discovered around the 1600s and they had no fire. They had no stone tools. To our knowledge, they had no music. So when you compare them to the bonobo, mm, the bonobo is a little hairier. Uh, he doesn't stand quite as upright, but there are a lot of similarities. And I think that as we look at culture, we kind of come to understand how we got to where we are. And I don't really think it's in our biology. I think we've attributed it to our biology, but I don't really think it's there. Okay, now get the markers. Yeah. And take the cherries too. Now watch out, stay away from them now. Now you can chase them again. Time to chase them. Now you have to stay away, get away, run away. Run! Oh, now we can chase him again. Go get him. Oh, no! Good, it's very good. Thank you so much. Look out, humans. Some of us will remember that our first real experience with computer technologies was with Pac-Man. Listen. Listen through the clamor. Shut down the noise and realize that every morning the sun rises. Just a few nights ago, the moon, Jupiter, and Mars smiled at us as it has for thousands of generations. And that we are heading into a time of change and we can fight it and suffer, or we can keep on going and just the balance of the sky. Well, that's what I'll be talking about next week as we announce the secret answer. Until then, this is Sidney Wildsmith saying adios. Until we meet again next week, when your voice of the earth rings out around the world, here on the Wild Side News.